Hello, I'm Joan Fadala, community historian, and I'm coming to you today from the Scottsdale Heritage Connection Messenger Family Research Center at the Civic Center Library in Scottsdale. And I don't know about you, but I really, during the COVID crisis, have missed going out shopping. I really miss my retail therapy, so I thought it would be a good time to have what I call a retro romp through retail Remember Whens in Scottsdale. And I hope that not only can we enjoy some cost-free retail therapy over the next few minutes, but I hope that it also inspires you that when you feel comfortable and safe that you'll go out and support all of our Scottsdale retailers, merchants, and their employees who have really weathered the storm during uh, the shutdown uh, and stay-at-home orders during the COVID crisis. Uh, and as the saying goes, shop Scottsdale. So let's find out now how in the 1950s Scottsdale earned the nickname of Shopsdale. Well, first I want to mention that our retail history dates all the way back to, to 1897. You know, as some of you may know, Scottsdale was founded in 1888 by Winfield and Helen Scott. So for those first few years, the Scots and the handful of people that followed them to settle here had to go into Phoenix or perhaps even to Tempe to do any of their shopping. And most of that, of course, was subsistence shopping, grocery and dry goods. But in 1897, with less than 50 people living here, J.L. Davis opened the town's first business, which was a combination of a general store, a grocery store, and the post office. And really that became not only the first business and the first post office, but it also became the first public gathering place in Scottsdale. And so just as today we kind of congregate or when it's safe uh, at retail establishments, particularly malls, that, are, that dates back in Scottsdale to 1897. Interesting. Um, in those days, the Davis family lived behind the store, and I might mention that store was located on the southwest corner of what became Brown uh, Avenue and Main Street. Uh, it, right now it's occupied by Bischoff Shades of the West gift store. Uh, but in those days, uh, not only was that uh, a rustic building, but the family lived behind the store and uh, it was a 24-7 a operation for living there and, uh, and working there. One thing interesting I might mention is that J.L. Davis was among the, uh, some of the first settlers who were very pro-temperance or anti-alcohol, and he actually put a deed restriction on that property that alcohol would never be sold. Well, many decades later, after prohibition, those deed restrictions were lifted. But at least you know that although they had groceries and uh, dry goods, they did not have any alcohol sales on that property. The other thing that J.L. Davis started, which is really a tribute to the decades and decades of merchants that followed him, is that he was a pioneer in retailers providing not only retail services, but were community leaders and community services. J.L. himself was a, a missionary, and on most Sundays, he and several others from Scottsdale would go to the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community and conduct uh, church services and helped build a church there on the Salt River community. So the other thing that J.L. Davis should be remembered for is that he hired Sarah Coldwell Thomas to work at the store. She had recently been widowed and had three small children. And after a few years, due to his failing health, J.L. Davis turned the store and sold the store to Mrs. Thomas. Uh, so that became Scottsdale's first women-owned business, and she became uh, Scottsdale's first female postmistress. So again, many firsts happened on that southwest corner of, Scotts, or of um, Brown and Maine.
Now, it was a pretty big job for her to run the only business in town, as well as raise three small children. So she uh, invited her sister and brother-in-law to move from Wisconsin and help her in the store. And the, uh, the, her brother-in-law, E.O. Brown, uh, worked uh, with her in the store and then eventually bought her out and uh, took over the store. And I always like to refer to E.O. Brown as one of our, quote, serial entrepreneurs because he started many businesses, uh, quite a few of them retail establishments in Scottsdale. Not only did he have the general store, but also he was uh, one of the, the, uh, the part owners of our first bank a retail uh, establishment next door to the general store, the Farmers Bank that opened in 1921. He also was a part owner of the Cotton Gin that opened on 2nd Street in the 1920s. Uh, and he is the namesake of Brown's Ranch and also had a cotton ranch uh, and farm where Honor Health Osborne is today. So again, those first retailers certainly made Scottsdale history. Well, as I mentioned, the retail establishments not only provided what I call subsistence retail to the farmers and ranchers that were settling in Scottsdale, but they also provided a gathering place uh, where townsfolk could uh, gather, talk over uh, their farming and ranching, and kind of exchange gossip, etc. The other thing that was really important uh, once we had electricity was that Brown's General Store was the very first place to have an ice plant and used a swamp cooler on its roof to provide not only cooling for the store but also ice so that uh, the food in the grocery store part would be, uh, would be kept fresh and cold, uh, also allowing us finally to have ice and ice cream, which uh, certainly was a great benefit fit to those shoppers and uh, people living in Scottsdale in the 1920s. Some of the other early retailers included the Boston store, uh, which was run by Marshall Kubelski and his wife. That was located on the north side of Main Street. And I might mention that Marshall Kubelski was the first cousin to Jack Benny, the famous actor and comedian, whose uh, original name was Kubelski. And uh, Jack Benny visited uh, Marshall and his wife uh, several times uh, during the time that they owned the store in Scottsdale. Our first drug store was located uh, across the street from the general store at Brown and Main, and that was uh, Lawson's or Sterling Drugs. Uh, J. Chu's Grocery was opened by the Song family, a, a catty corner from the general store. Uh, that had been a pool hall and then became a grocery store in 1928. And I might mention that the third generation of the, the Chu and Song family uh, still operates that as a retail location, only it's not a grocery store anymore. It's called Mexican Imports. So we have a lot of longevity among our retailers. Uh, buyer Ayer's Grocery Store was located um, on the, the northwest corner of Scottsdale and Main Street, and it was taken over by one of its clerks, Earl Ship, uh, and he uh, operated a grocery store there for many years. Uh, and as I mentioned, it wasn't just places where you could buy goods, uh, uh, there were also what I would call retail services. Uh, the Farmer's Bank that opened in 1921, that's now the Rusty Spur and uh, our first gas stations uh, opened shortly after we had our first car dealership opened around 1918 and operated by Walter Smith right there in downtown Scottsdale. Uh, and most of the retailers at that time, in fact, at least four or five of the early photos that you see, uh, they would install a gas pump right in front of their store uh, so that their shoppers could also fill up their farm vehicles and uh, early cars during that time. 
But again, most of the early retail in the, uh, from uh, the time of J.L. Davis's store through World War II was mostly, again, to serve the farm and ranch families living here. If they wanted to have fashion or other, uh, what I would say, uh, not necessary items, but uh, frills or fun things, they would have to drive into Phoenix and shop at places like Goldwater's or Corex or J.C. Penny or they could order from the Sears or Montgomery Ward catalogs. Now, during the 1920s and 30s, even though we didn't have air conditioning yet here, we began to have a little bit more of a tourist industry. And those uh, tourists that were visiting here for the season were anxious to take something home with them that represented Scottsdale. So we uh, started opening a few gift shops. One of the first gift shops that opened in Scottsdale uh, was at the Graves Guest Ranch on the northwest corner of uh, Scottsdale and, uh, and Indian School. Uh, they specialized in Native American baskets and other crafts as well as other Southwest products. And then in the 1940s, shortly after World War II, we had a few others open. Uh, one was called the Picket Fence, which was adjacent to Earl's Grocery Store. And then there was one that I love the name of, the Pack Rat, uh, which was uh, adjacent to J. Chu's Grocery Store on Brown Avenue. The really big uh, thing that put us on the map after World War II was the opening of arts and craft shops. In February of 1946, uh, the abandoned uh, former general store that had been uh, empty during World War II had been purchased by Tom Darlington and he converted it into a working artist studio called the Arizona Craftsman. Again, this was on the corner of Brown and Main Street. And within that center were Lloyd Kiva making his famous Kiva leather pouches that were stylized after a Navajo medicine man uh, medicine bag. Uh, there was Wes Segner who was creating beautiful uh, silver jewelry. Uh, Matilda Schaefer Davis was creating ceramics and pottery. Her husband Lou was an oil painter who had a studio in the Arizona Craftsman. Uh, and there was also uh, Buck Saunders who was a wood sculptor and created beautiful sculptures as well as wooden bowls. So this was n not only something where you could buy the crafts, but you could also watch the artisans making the crafts. And it was an immediate hit for all of those people that after the World War II rationing was over and they were eager to travel again and had watched all those Western movies during the war and were eager to come and see the West, this was a place that they could buy authentic, handmade uh, Southwestern arts and crafts and meet the artisans who were making those crafts. They got a huge boost by two visits from former First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who was in town in the spring of 40 right after the Craftsman opened and again in the spring of 47. She wrote about the amazing crafts that were available when she did her nationally syndicated My Day column and that really put Scottsdale on the map. Uh, across the street from the uh, Arizona Craftsman a few years later, Buck and Leo Saunders opened the Trading Post, uh, one of the first art galleries in Scottsdale. And one of the first artists that they uh, featured was Ted de Grazia, selling not only his art, but then later on things like wind bells and plates and other items with his distinctive uh, darling little uh, Southwestern children featured on those. So as, as I call this the Arizona Craftsman Center, it was kind of the pebble that rippled. It started at Scottsdale and Maine, and over the next uh, few years in the late 19th, 1940s and early 1950s, craft shops and art galleries and art studios opened throughout the downtown Scottsdale area, really, again, putting us on the map uh, and featured in places like Life Magazine, as this 1956 issue shows, where our Western uh, shops are featured and other shops are featured. So we had lots of national publicity about uh, how wonderful it was to shop in in the westmost western town. 
interesting that through probably the 1970s, but certainly in the early days of the 1900s, all of the shops in Scottsdale bore their owner's name and with that bore a special responsibility of the retailers that because their name was on the store and it was a one-of-a-kind store, they really uh, were a neighbor, they were a friend, they were somebody that we knew and they took extra care in serving their neighbors and friends. And I might mention just a few of those. For example, we had grocery stores named Byers and Earls and Chews and Tams and Andersons and Kubelskis uh, oh, and Mahoney's and then emporiums like Kubelski's Boston Store and Macomb Brothers. We had pharmacies by the name of Lawson's, Browns and Lutes. Uh, Lute Wasbotten uh, was uh, the great pharmacist during the 19, late 1940s through the 1970s. Uh, we had clothing and fashion stores like Sabas, Swicks, Porters, Troy Murray's, and then fashion places like Leona Caldwell's and again Lloyd Kiva and miscellaneous uh, emporiums or retailers like Wilmoth's Appliances, Peterson's Garage and Car Sales, Don Pablo, which first started out in downtown Scottsdale and then moved up to the corner of Pinnacle Peak and Scottsdale Road and had what he called the House of Relics, which was a really interesting collection of things to buy. And Erne was a perfumer uh, as a retailer in what would become Fifth Avenue. But again, it was really important that these retailers had their name on the store because they wanted people to know that they were uh, their friends and neighbors. And because of this, because they were such a big part of the community, these early merchants and retailers, just as they are today, were community builders. Uh, in the Depression, they were the ones who extended credit to their neighbors and started the Scottsdale Credit Association. In the 1920s and then again in, the 19, in 1947, it was these retailers and merchants that started the Scottsdale Chamber of Commerce and actually policed themselves. There was an, uh, a headline in a late 1940s Scottsdale Progress saying that because Scottsdale wasn't incorporated yet and didn't have a way for municipality uh, business licenses to be issued, that the Chamber of Commerce voluntarily kind of screened new merchants to make sure they weren't uh, is the vernacular and kind of a politically incorrect term now but they were called jip joints or jip artists and they the Com Chamber of Commerce wanted to make sure that no uh, unsavory retailers moved into Scottsdale. Uh, these were also the retailers that helped the community through World War II rationing and over the years they were the ones that sponsored events and also sponsored youth sports teams so again Again, we thank all of those retailers who started it and uh, continue the tradition today. Well now, Scottsdale has also been well known for shopping centers as well as its one-of-a-kind stores and galleries. One of the first shopping centers, if you will, to open was in 1947 when the Village Patio Shops opened on the north side of, Scottsdale, of uh, Main Street. It had formerly been a little group of cottages uh, that were a guest ranch operated by Lottie Seidel, but in 1947 uh, they moved in, uh, uh, they retailers moved into those little cottages. There was a, a bookstore that also was a lending library. Uh, not like our public libraries today, you actually had to rent books for a quarter apiece there. Uh, and also the new Chamber of Commerce uh, moved into one of the buildings there. Uh, then on the corner of First Avenue and uh, Scottsdale Road, the Ranch House shops opened on, in 1950 and their anchor was a, a one level but uh, very she she shop and that was the Scottsdale's first Goldwater store. For those of you that might remember the Goldwater department stores, that was the, the place to shop uh, and had migrated out from Phoenix and that was their first Scottsdale location in the ranch house shops right at the location where there's a restaurant now that had once been um, Schlotsky's and Hobo Joe's and now it's a restaurant called Capriotti's.
And also, because of Goldwater's being there, they had f fashion shows right there in the parking lot during the high season in the 1950s. And then across the street from those Rance House shops was a very innovative at the time uh, shopping area called Pima Plaza. And the reason it was innovated is up through World War II, we really hadn't given much thought to shopping and parking. But now that uh, tourists were coming for short term visits and driving their own cars rather than coming for a whole season by train, we needed places for them to, to park. So Pima Plaza was. Uh, designed with a median strip of, of a head-in parking as well as parking in front of the stores themselves with designated lined out parking spaces rather than just kind of willy-nilly driving your car up and parking wherever the, uh, you felt like parking. So this was very innovative and we got uh, some municipal publicity about that. And it was also innovative in that it, this was, a, in some places, two stories where the retail was at the bottom level and offices were on the second floor. So those were really the advent of our shopping centers. Now, unfortunately, after four years of wonderful operation, the Arizona Craftsman Center there at Brown and Main had a very disastrous fire in the spring of 1950, causing all of the craftspeople to have to relocate. Well, fortunately, with some financial assistance by Ann and Fowler McCormick of the McCormick Ranch, um, and he at the time, of course, was the chairman of the Board of International Harvester, they helped the artists who actually were uh, favorites of Anne McCormick's, who is a great patron of the arts. The McCormick's helped them finance moving to a new, previously undeveloped location just north of the core downtown area and reestablish their shops, opening in November of 1950, just before holiday shopping season. And that area became known as Scottsdale's Fifth Avenue Shops. Fifth Avenue was uh, even bigger than what the Arizona craftsmen who had originally started at Brown and Main, and many more artisans, craftsmen, and fashion shops opened there. And when I say fashion shops, these were all places that where the fashions were be being created right here in Scottsdale. Uh, so not only did they offer the chance to get custom-made items, uh, clothing as well as accessories, but they featured these items in weekly fashion shows with a runway right down Fifth Avenue. Uh, they also, at the end of each season, usually in April, sponsored a huge street sale called the Thieves Market, where the merchants and fashion uh, shops would actually dress up in costumes uh, to a theme and uh, welcome their customers with a little bit of fun at the end of the season. And uh, Lloyd Kiva, the one famous for his bags, had also expanded into doing silk-screened fashions uh, for both men and women, sports shirts and dresses, etc. And he then built Kiva Craft Center, known as uh, Craftsman Court, there on the south side of Fifth Avenue. And many uh, new uh, craftspeople moved in there, not just fashion artists, but that's where Charles Lolima and his wife at the time became potters, and then um, he also, Charles that is, became a very world-renowned jeweler in a few years. Uh, and that's also where Erne, the custom perfumer, uh, operated, and Paola Soleri began selling his wind bells in a little kiosk there at the Kiva uh, Craft Center, or Crafts Court, in about 19 1955 and on. But they certainly uh, became, the Fifth Avenue shops and the Kiva Crafts Court became the location for many ad shoots, advertising everything from beer to uh, fashions and, uh, and fabrics and many other products. But we'll just say that although now you can shop anywhere in Scottsdale, in the 1950s and 1960s, downtown Scottsdale was the place to be. And I love this particular ad. It's very primitive, but this was the ad that the Chamber of Commerce ran in the late 1940s and early 1950s. 
and it touted Scottsdale as, quote, the most unique shopping center in the nation, the showplace of Phoenix, Arizona resort capital, the fashion center of the Southwest, and the arts and crafts center of the West. So again, uh, we were renowned uh, for this and also for being the West most Western town, the slogan that Merchant Malcolm White had corn coined in the last, in the part of the 1940s and adopted uh, in ads by the Chamber of Commerce. We had boutiques, we had galleries, we had craft shops, we had souvenir shops, we intermingled with cafes, uh, we had jewelers, all of these were locally owned and one-of-a-kind shops. But these were also supplemented by those things that those of us, the living in Scottsdale, needed, like grocers and dry cleaners and laundromats and appliance stores. So again, if you wanted to buy something, downtown Scottsdale Scottsdale was the place to be, just like it is today and also throughout Scottsdale. The, I might mention that uh, up until, well, we were incorporated in 1951, so that's when business licensing began. But believe it or not, we didn't have our own sales tax until the summer of 1960. So you could shop in downtown Scottsdale and only pay a state um, sales tax and not have uh, a, a Scottsdale sales tax imposed. Uh, also, uh, the, a great thing that helped to boost uh, shopping in downtown Scottsdale were the many events that the merchants helped uh, start and promote, things like the Parada del Sol Parade, and also open air fashion shows. And then once spring training came to Scottsdale in 1956 with the Scottsdale Ballpark just being about two blocks from the heart of all of those shops and boutiques in downtown Scottsdale, that was certainly a big boost to the retailers as well, and they wholeheartedly supported spring training. Well, probably the largest concentration of stores in Scottsdale is Scottsdale Fashion Square. It got its start in 1961 as a very different and smaller retail establishment. When Goldwaters was the anchor store when it opened in the fall of 1961, uh, and also there was a liquor store, a barber shop, and the Ryan Evans Drug Store located there, as well as an A.J. Bayless grocery store that had opened on that site in 1960. In the 19, early 1970s, Fashion Square had added stores and expanded west to include the Diamonds Department Store. West Corps acquired Scottsdale Fashion Square in about 19, in the mid, early to mid 1980s. And then in 1989, it linked with another mall uh, to the west, Camel View Mall, and had a, a retail bridge over Goldwater Boulevard. And then in 1998, it expanded southward with a retail bridge over Camelback Road and ended in the uh, department store of uh, Nordstrom. So again, a very large and very popular uh, regional shopping mall that has uh, changed with the times and the trends. It continues to expand with different stores and also with many services and business opportunities. So Scottsdale Fashion Square, of course, has been very important to Scottsdale. Also, with the advent of Scottsdale Fashion Square and during that particular time in the late 1950s, early 1960s, we began to see our first uh, regional and national chain stores arriving in Scottsdale. One of the first to arrive was a Woolworth store that was right on the corner of uh, Main Street and Scottsdale Road. It's now the Legacy Gallery, but for a long time after Woolworths was the Wigwam uh, gift shop and Southwest uh, store. Uh, another big box store, one of the first to open in Scottsdale, was Govway, which opened on McDowell Road and was uh, a very popular place to shop uh, as a membership store. Other uh, chains that started opening in the 1950s and 60s, in addition to Goldwaters and, and Woolworths, included Sprouse Wrights, TG and Y at Papago Plaza, the Bashes and Bayless grocery stores, and Hanny's uh, Phoenix uh, clothery uh, for both men and women.
And they, at that time, we were also, our retailers, both the independents as well as the chains, were incorporating some of the national retail trends by offering trading stamps. Remember SNH green stamps and gold bond stamps? Not only did you get those at a lot of the retailers and gas stations, but we had redemption centers in Scottsdale so that you could cash in those uh, trading stamps. Uh, we also had gifts with purchase, uh, Solana Ware, which is an uh, oven-to-table ceramic uh, company located in Scottsdale, was a, a popular item that retailers gave uh, to create loyalty among their cost customers by giving you a free dish or something so that you could build up your collection of Solana Ware. Or glasses with cactus designs on them was another popular gift with purchase. And also that was when credit cards began. Now speaking of shopping malls, uh, another famous one that is no longer with us was Los Arcos Mall, one of the first totally enclosed and all air conditioned malls op uh, opened in uh, the Phoenix region and that was located at Scottsdale and McDowell Roads. It was anchored by Sears and Broadway and also had restaurants like Luby's, Poncho's, and Red Robin, had a Harkins Cinema in the lower level, and had a variety of not only fashion stores but also things like pet shops and eyeglass places and when we first started getting uh, our own phones at home and then eventually uh, handheld phones, uh, there were phone shops in there as well. Those Sarcos was extremely popular when it opened in 1969, but by 1999 most of the stores began closing. The entire mall closed by 1999. It was torn down in 2001. A couple of uh, proposals uh, to replace it uh, came forward, but eventually in 2006-2007, Skysong, a partnership with Scott, between Scottsdale and Arizona State University, opened on that site. Although it, Skysong in and of itself was more of a business incubator site and a technology center uh, incorporating new ideas uh, from people with a great uh, concepts for new businesses coming out of ASU. In and of itself, it wasn't a retailer, but with all of the new businesses and the surrounding part, uh, apartment buildings being built, it created new demand for retail in the McDowell Corridor and really helped breathe new life into that area of Scottsdale. Uh, certainly not only for what had been Los Arcos, but across the street, the Papago Plaza shopping center that opened in 1959 was just raised for redevelopment um, as a mixed-use center uh, just recently in 2019. And the other thing that McDowell Road was known for that was a huge sales tax generator and also retail was the fact that that's where starting in the 1960s we had a concentration of car dealers and eventually it was even dubbed Motor Mile and at its height had over 30 different brands of cars being sold along McDowell Corridor. Eventually those car dealerships started migrating to the air park and other areas um, and now many of the sites that had been car dealerships along Motor Mile have been morphed into other businesses but that was certainly an important part of retail in Scottsdale. During the 80s and 90s, shopping uh, spread out from the nucleus of the downtown to just about everywhere in Scottsdale as Scottsdale began to grow and became, become not only a thriving residential area but a great tourist attraction. Uh, we had the Borgata that opened in 1981. Price Club was one of the first big box retailers to open in the air park in 1987. El Pedregal, which was a uh, series of boutiques that opened in far north Scottsdale uh, near Carefree. The Galleria opened in 1980, excuse me, 1991. Uh, didn't last very long and is now a great office complex uh, and also contributes to retail by providing many downtown employee, employees that like to shop on their lunch hour or after work. 
The Seville opened at Indian Bend and Scottsdale Road in 1990. The Promenade in 2000. The Scottsdale Quarter um, on the site of an, a research and development facility operated by Dial. The Quarter opened in 2009. So again and again, there were so many places uh, that offered specialty uh, and hometown type retail establishments throughout Scottsdale. In the 1990s, in addition to brick and mortar retail, and I'm not sure I even knew that term until we started having e-tail, in other words, uh, buying and selling over the internet, and many of Scottsdale's retailers embraced uh, the opportunity to not only sell to customers that came into their stores, but also to be able to reach a worldwide audience uh, by marketing and selling over the internet. Uh, and that uh, certainly uh, launched us into an era that by the time we came to the spring of uh, 2020 and had to do so much of our shopping from home, we were already practiced e-tailers. But that didn't mean that the brick and mortar uh, retail shops went away. It, um, they certainly have continued to be the backbone of uh, shopping in Scottsdale. We have also been really good at repurposing and uh, have great retail resale shops in Scottsdale. Uh, for example, the chain of My Sister's Closet is known by so many people, but other retail resale outlets uh, have helped us been, be really good recyclers and because Scottsdale is known to be quite fashionable. Uh, Many people come here knowing that they're going to get some really good, gently used items by shopping resale here in Scottsdale. And also, uh, resale shops have also been a great place to shop for a cause in Scottsdale. Retailers uh, that have been operated by our nonprofit organizations, the Girls and Boys Club, the Hospital Auxiliary, the Cancer Sen um, Society, Goodwill, uh, and others, the Humane Society, have all operated thrift shops where we've been able to donate goods and then they're able to resell them and benefit their particular cause. Other places that do a great business are the book corrals at our libraries, the art spot at uh, the Center for the Arts in Smoka, the Museum of the West gift shop, the Taliesin West gift shop. So there are so many places where you can buy really great things that represent Scottsdale and also benefit that organization as well. So I hope that this has given you an opportunity to have some, some uh, cost-free retail therapy, but also to really appreciate the wonderful merchants and service providers that have done uh, a great job in keeping us supplied and, and entertained and also uh, fashionable in Scottsdale. Uh, we have so many unique shops that continue to thrive today. Uh, places like the Poison Pen Book Store, the Sphinx Palm Pantry, uh, the Cosanti Windbells, all of the golf pro shops in Scottsdale, uh, the Barrett Jackson uh, car auction sales, all of our art galleries, and I can go on and on, but the many places that we are so lucky to have that are so uniquely Scottsdale. And once again, we have been blessed by having great retailers that have benefited not only our sales tax, but in our economy, but have been great employers and have uh, provided community leadership in so many ways. So I hope this has inspired you to go out and support Scottsdale retailers and service providers and shop till you drop, but don't forget to wear your mask and take your hand sanitizer. See you in the stores.